This is Vodcast 3 of Unit 1. Uh, this Vodcast you should watch after completing building an atom activity uh, because we're going to take some of the information and use it in here. So you want to have that done first. Uh, the main thing that we're going to be looking at here is why atoms bond. And this is the standard getting into that you can properly use uh, uh, atomic vocabulary. So let's do a quick review. All right, so where are protons and neutrons found in the atom? You should be thinking to yourself, nucleus. All right, and where are the electrons found? You should be thinking to yourself, they're flying around uh, in some kind of cloud around the nucleus. All right, some people think of little planets going around uh, a star, and that's okay. Not quite how it really is. That's fine. Uh, can we place as many electrons inside each of the energy levels as we wanted? If you think back and start putting in electrons, uh, in fact, only two are on the inner one, and then on the outer one, you should be able to fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That's really all you could. In the next layer out, you couldn't fit any more than that. In fact, Each level can only hold a certain amount. Uh, if you've taken chemistry before, these are S and P uh, uh, orbits. Uh, and as a general rule for this class, we're going to make it uh, simplified. Those outer shell electrons are known as valence electrons. Very important. And they can only hold eight for the most part. It's not true for everything, but in this case, we're going to say that that outer shell of valence electrons can only hold eight. All right. And the reason why that's really important for us to talk about here is that's how elements react. All right. It's not based on how many protons or electrons. It's based on how many valence electrons are floating around in that outer orbit. All right. And when atoms react, that's when you get these bonds. All right. Um, let me go ahead and give you an example here. Sodium metal and chlorine gas. All right, chlorine gas was something that you used in World War II, uh, mustard gas, sodium metal is this bright, shiny metal that's uh, very, very reactive. When you put the two things together, let's see what happens. Sodium metal is heated until it melts and just begins to burn. Then it is immersed into the yellow-green chlorine gas. The sodium begins to burn in chlorine with an intense yellow flame. It produces a white smoke of sodium chloride. Pretty cool reaction from, uh, from that sodium metal put into that chlorine gas. You get that really uh, violent reaction. It's very hot uh, and created sodium chloride. Sodium gas plus chlorine, or excuse me, sodium metal plus chlorine uh, gas gets you sodium chloride. And these two that are pretty dangerous. All right, chlorine gas will definitely kill you if you breathe it in too much. Uh, sodium gas actually melts, uh, reacts very violently with, uh, with water. Uh, creates sodium chloride, which is what? Anyone know? All right, it's really just table salt. All right, when you eat table salt, you are actually eating both of those deadly chemicals that have just bound, bonded together to make sodium chloride, table salt. Now, why do those two things combined together to make table salt. That's really what you should be asking yourself. Why do they react to make salt? And uh, that's where this vodcast is going. There are three bonds, ionic, compound, or excuse me, covalent, and metallic. So if we just take a look at the valence electrons first of each one of those, again, the valence electrons are those outer shells. When things react, they're trying to either fill up that valence electron shell so they have eight uh, electrons total in that outer shell, or they're trying to empty it so they have no electrons, and therefore the, the shell that was inside of that now becomes the valence electron shell and is completely full. All right, happy atoms have full valence electron shells. And they'll either gain or lose electrons to fill or empty that. That's the goal of all reactions here. So for example, let's take a look at oxygen. Oxygen, all right, if you want to know how it's going to react or how many valence electrons it's going to have, first you need to know how many protons it has. 
if you look on page 36 in your, for your periodic table, you look and there's a little uh, number 8 above uh, the O. That is the atomic number. The atomic number, again, is the number of protons that are in that, uh, that atom, that element. All elements of oxygen have eight protons. That's what makes it uh, the element to oxygen. All right. Now, how many electrons would it have if it's neutral? Now, if each proton is positive and each electron is negative and they have the same uh, absolute value, that means you'd have to have the same number of electrons to make it neutral, all right? which means it has eight. Now, how many electrons are in that outer shell? Just because it has eight doesn't mean it, it only has one shell. If you think back, all right, let's go to our simulation. So I've got oxygen here. Now let's just add in our electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oops. So there's <clears throat> my neutral oxygen atom. I've got eight total, but two of them are on that inner shell, which means there's six on the outer shell. So it's not a full outer shell of eight, which means we need to either react so that we can lose these six electrons, or we're going to gain the two more to fill this up. That's what oxygen's goal is going to be. So there are six valence electrons. Now, will oxygen gain or lose electrons? In this case, again, it wants to do what's easiest. All right. It's going to gain electrons because it's easier to gain two than it is to lose six. But where is it going to get those from? All right. Where is it going to gain two electrons from? Well, that comes from other atoms. All right. There are other atoms uh, floating around there that want to get rid of electrons because, again, they're trying to empty their shells instead of fill it like oxygen wants to. So when oxygen gains two electrons, let's say it runs into another atom and picks up these two more electrons. All right. Now it's got that full outer shell. It's still oxygen because oxygen, again, has uh, uh, the, uh, the same number of protons of eight. But now it's become an ion, all right, a negatively charged ion. And that's where that little number uh, comes from in the top right-hand corner. The negative 2 sign shows that it's an ion, and it has a charge of negative 2. Now, it's an oxygen atom that's happy because it has valence electrons, but it's a negative charge. So if we take a look at our original example there of that video with the sodium and the chlorine and why they react the way they do, all right, hopefully this is going to give you an example. Now, again, the sodium on the left here has 11 protons, all right? And it also means it has 11 electrons. There's only one electron floating around in its outer shell. It wants to get rid of that really badly. Chlorine, on the other hand, is the complete opposite. It's got 17 protons and just needs one more electron. So these two atoms come together. This is weakly held on uh, by the, the, uh, the protons in the nucleus for the sodium. It gets ripped away and stolen by the chlorine. Right, the chlorine steals this uh, electron away, uh, making its electron shell happy for, and the valence electron shell over here and the sodium happy. But now they're opposite charges. You've got a positive charged sodium. You've got a negatively charged chlorine. Their uh, uh, opposites are going to attract and cause them to bond together to make that table salt. This is an ionic bond. That electron is not uh, uh, being around the sodium anymore. It is held together to the chlorine. On the other hand, take a look at a covalent bond. Kind of the same situation here where you have atoms that want to either gain or lose electrons. In this case, you have two oxygen atoms and a carbon. All right, The carbon can either pick up uh, four more electrons or it could uh, lose those four electrons. Either way, oxygen wants two more electrons on both sides. It's got six, just needs two more. Well, what can happen, instead of ripping those electrons away and stealing them, the oxygens could just share them with the carbon. And if the carbon atom shares two electrons with one oxygen atom, two electrons with another, what happens here is that fills up all of the valence electron shells because the oxygen is sharing two electrons 
with uh, with the the uh, carbon. The carbon is sharing its outer electrons, and everyone's happy. This is a covalent bond. Those electrons, if you were going to think of them as planets orbiting around, would be orbiting around both. Maybe not equally, but they would orbit around both. Or electrons, when they're shared by two atoms, it's a covalent bond. Um, there's also one final one. It's called a metallic bond. And this is actually when many electrons share many electrons. Uh, it's kind of like a chicken noodle soup, where the broth is this electron cloud, and the chunks of chicken are your, your positively charged uh, nuclei of the atoms. All right, they're just kind of floating around. They're all sharing those electrons. Now, the fact that they're all sharing these very uh, weakly gives those, prop, uh, those metals certain uh, characteristics. One, they're malleable. Two, ductile, uh, which means you could pull them into a wire. Malleable means you could smash it down into a, a plate. And three, that they're good conductors because the electrons can easily flow from one to the next. So those are the three bonds. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow.